Good luck. All right, this marks uh, the first round of the All-American Chuggy Tournament. Um, match format, 20 minutes per player per game with 60-second Byoyomi. The final round will be best of three. Um, so the way the tournament pairings are allocated, it looks like maybe if i'm lucky i'll get to send um the b half of the tournament and play against the winner of the a half who looks like it might be lily um it'll be interesting um but let's take it one game at a time ah uh, so it's much fun as third foul rook is. Hmm. Well, I shouldn't play central foul rook against what looks like it's going to be fourth file. So we're going to play this. We're going to go ahead and continue with our third foul rook strategy. And yeah, I'll have to study third foul rook a bit more in the future to understand some of the much sharper lines that are involved. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember some move ordering stuff. Hmm. I mean, for all the thought I've given this, I'm still unclear on, like, if I want to play quick Ishida, I think I push this pawn, then drop the rook back down to the fourth rank, and then bring up bishop to the edge and the knight in front or something? Or is the bishop over here next to the rook? But that seems silly. I don't remember where the bishop goes in a quick Ishida or an Ishida shape. Um... Hmm. All right, there is one tactic here. We're going to play the ultra sharp stuff this time. I'm not sure that this directly benefits me, actually. So if I go out of my way to sack the rook here, like, do I gain something from that? Not that I see. I mean, I do gain being able to strike this um, lance right in the opening. I see. Yeah, lining up my pieces like this doesn't actually make it easier for me to attack, does it? Um, I should build a castle.
it's the one thing that like idly floats through my mind is the thought that like if I could only get the bishop to five five and take here in the same move, then there might be tactics. But like I can't force anything to happen here beyond what's already happened. If I do exchange and I drop a pawn here, um, yes, that's a bit of a thorn, but it's a bit hard to reach the king from this side of the board. So, yeah, if I get too impatient, I don't profit from my own impatience. Um... Let's keep this flexible. There's more than one castle that could be chosen here. All right. Um, not sure what to do against that. Truly. Like, do I play Cozy Castle in this situation? Is that warranted? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna defend against this advancing once more. Um, there is one downside to bringing the rook up. And that's that, in theory, it could be forced to move again. But... I think my position is fine. Right, so this was kind of sort of my plan. Was that I have something of a threat here. Um, all right, let's do it. So this is a bit of a surprise if you've never seen the sacrifice before. Um, and the sacrifice is just exchanging a rook for a bishop. Uh, in the opening, often uh, the bishop can be a more aggressive piece than a rook can be. There's not even any direct, at least I did not search for a direct material win here. But what there is, is like lots of pressure against Gota's position. But there might also be a direct material gain somewhere. Maybe. Um, I don't think so. I think it's just that we have this interesting imbalance and get to enjoy it for a bit. But yeah, the silver is actually really clever. Um, hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. I have a difficult task ahead of me. Because there's not any immediate tactic that just decides this in my favor. It's unlikely that this is in my favor. So, yeah. What do we do now? We have two pawns in hand. Uh, pawn push, silver push, pawn push, silver push. I don't see that winning. Um... I guess we build Cozy Castle, because this is just crazy how quickly this is unraveling. This whole position is interesting. Um... Or maybe I should build a solid castle and leave my options open a bit. I, I don't know. Yeah, we're just going to tuck the king into the corner. Um... Of course, after I move, I have this big reaction to what have I done, but um, I think it's okay. We've got a complicated position on our hands. All right, we're going to see where this ends up. Mm -hmm. That's a useful defensive move. Um... All right, I defend my silver. So I didn't need to play this pawn to get the silver to move up, but the silver moving up has advantages here too. But the disadvantage of bringing the silver up is that, like, now it can't go to the left. So... Shogi's not simple. Every move has some advantage and every move has some disadvantage. So, for example, I got a rook, or I got a bishop in the opening, but I gave up a rook to get it. So that's complicated.
So yeah, this pawn is indirectly defended. Even absent the one fork, there's another fork here. That's not immediately clear what the best way to defend it is. Oh god. I missed a tactic several turns in a row here. Um, this threatening to promote would have been an interesting tactic. And it's interesting because if they try to protect against this promotion, oh, they could block it with a pawn. They don't have to block it with this gold. If they'd use the gold to try to block the promotion, I could take it and then take the knight. But no, they just block with the pawn. And it's not so interesting anymore. Um. Oh. This is too adventurous. Um, that's not quite accurate here. So I have a choice between bishop drop here or bishop takes knight. And while the bishop drop looks like the more fun move, um, taking the knight might be the right thing to do here. Even though... Hmm. So if I drop it here, they could take my silver, I take back, and then they defend this knight. And okay, I have a rook but it's difficult to use the rook correctly. If I check directly, if king takes, then I have another fork here. They could block with the bishop. They don't have a knight in hand. But yeah, they block this check with the bishop on 5-5. Five five. I take, they take my silver. So what initially looks like the more clever thing by taking the knight right away it gives them a bishop they, they could use in hand to take the silver later on. So the right thing to do is actually directly drop the bishop, even though this allows them to sack the rook for a silver. Uh, even though this also like, tells them exactly where my bishop's going to go. Because I don't have a counter to bishop takes, king takes, bishop drop, bishop drop. I don't have a counter here. Um, I mean, I could exchange bishops, then silver takes, then bishop drop again, forking the rook and the silver. Maybe. Maybe that's best. Well, then they can drop a bishop to defend both of these pieces. I could attack the pinned piece, the rook can take my pawn that's attacking. Wait, hang on. Bishop takes, king takes, bishop drop, bishop drop, bishop takes, silver takes, bishop drop, pinning the silver, hitting the rook, bishop drop, protecting the rook, take the bishop, bishop takes bishop, rook drop, hitting the silver, hitting this. Uh, yeah. So actually taking the knight looks correct. Um, because I can attack the pinned silver. And because they don't have other better ways to respond to this bishop drop fork. Other than dropping a bishop here. But I can take that and then redo this drop. If they retreat with the rook, I can attack the pinned silver. It retreats. It's saved. So that actually doesn't work. Um, hmm. So basically, there's no trick here. I just have to go for the obvious bishop drop. They can sack the rook for a silver. I don't get to promote either bishop, and they do get to defend this knight. But I get a rook. And with said rook, I can drop it here and then threaten to take the head, threaten to take the gold, threaten to take this knight. Yes, yeah, so that looks best out of all the ways this could resolve. So if I attack here, I'm 
directly threatening a rook. They could protect it with another rook. And then I take the knight. And I'm okay. Um, yeah, I think it's going to have to be this here. I wanted it to be something more complicated. Um, because there was a lot that could have happened there. But yeah, if I try like a bishop pinning a silver, silver can slide along the diagonal to protect itself. Um, so it's difficult for a silver to get lost to a pin, at least if the bishop's the pinning piece. So I think what they reasoned here is that either they'll move the rook or sacrifice the rook or something to protect their king. Um, maybe they intended a rook drop here, doubling up on my silver. I don't know. Um, what I do know is I'm threatening this knight. I'm also threatening the rook. So, to whatever extent it might have looked like I was trying to bait this tactic, that really wasn't my intent. If I found some other better attack um, that didn't require a trap like this, I would have picked the other more effective thing. Um, and I don't think that my tactic here required a trap. Uh, I think there were ways this could have played out had they not taken that pawn. Um, I could have like brought up my silver and gold to defend this side of the board and found some other way. Um, I've been trying to get my bishop to drop here, taking a pawn or taking something. It's not been successful. Uh, okay, the direct capture. All right. Um, oh, I'm in check. I can't ignore this. I was going to say, what if I take here check? But let me first see if I'm in check. I am in check. I'm taking this. That would be sad if I took this knight. It could happen, but... Right, so they protect their knight. And in doing so, the king is safer. Um, they do have another rook in hand. I do need to be careful about this. I think my plan is to drop a rook here, attacking the knight and the gold, and plan is that if I can win enough generals for the rook, um, we're going to do that. But also, probably we're just going to end up taking the knight if they, like, defend but if I take, if I drop here, if they drop on their back rank, what do I do? I don't have a plan against that, do I? I mean, where else could my rook possibly go? But if I drop, they could just do a rook drop. I could take gold takes. And this slightly weakens the castle, but nothing to write home about. Um, hmm. I mean, maybe that's the best I can do right now, though.
Rook drop, rook drop, rook takes, king takes? Then I could take here twice and attack. Um, rook drop, gold over. Rook takes, gold takes, bishop takes. Yeah, I just keep taking all my stuff. Wait, no, rook drop here. King, 3, 1. Um, or king, 7, 9. Bishop takes. Rook drops, silver drops somewhere. I take here, check. My rook's not going anywhere. Um, I mean... They discourage leading an attack with a heavy piece when lighter pieces can be effective. My problem here is that I've already invested two bishops in this attack, so it needs to prevail. <laughs> That's kind of a problem. Um, or at least I need some way to break up their castle somehow. I don't see myself doing better than this, but there's ways they can counter this. Um, my rook does not have much space in which to operate. Oh. Uh, well, if they try directly at defending the knight and attacking the bishop, I uh, was less concerned about this, because um, my plan was to take the knight and the gold. Or take the gold... F well, yeah, we take the knight first. This forces bishop... or silver takes. And then we could take the silver or take the gold. Um... In either case, with a nice attack. So... How do I play? I mean, I have to take the knight. We know this. Well, no. Taking the knight is actually risky. Um, it's screaming to be taken, but it's risky. The reason I like it is because it's risky. But can I admit that to myself? I don't know.
All right, I think I have some idea how I'm doing this. So we start with the sacrifice, and then we're going to sacrifice the rook next. And then bishop takes, and I think the rest of this holds itself more or less together, despite looking like a complete and utter mess. Um, this is tough. I've been trying to decide what to do here. If bishop takes, then I can take the gold later, and the king is already out. But they have an armada of pieces they can drop. If rook takes, their king is running back toward their castle. So it looks obvious that I should do bishop takes, despite really wanting to do rook takes here. Rook takes is not close to mate. This is rough. Yeah, this king being too close to these other pieces makes it too risky for me to just throw the rook like I really want to throw the rook here. A rook is a nice piece. I need to respect it a little bit better. Um, the rook will strike this gold later with tempo. So it's okay. It's so spooky. But yeah, I can't give them a rook right now. So the whole time I wanted to do rook takes, but in reality I think bishop takes is material-wise and king safety-wise like the better move here. Um, because here this plucks their king out into the open, even though I don't have a bishop anymore. I think it's okay. What's disturbing is how vulnerable my position could be. Especially now that they have two bishops. <laughs> I have to watch out for stuff. But do I? Like, if I'm actually trying to make mate threats, how much do I have to think about defense? I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure out or read how do I save the most time defending my king. I never completed my castle, but like 
surely at some point I need to move the gold next to the other gold. Um, the closer I can bunch my corner together, the safer I'll be against stuff. But also, if I have a checkmate, I should play the checkmate, but I don't think I do. Not immediately. Interesting. Not what I expected. Um, Sanjuvio. So this is risky because I've split my golds. Um But it does protect the front gold. The rear gold is not defended. But maybe I play twin gold castle. Maybe twin gold is strong against bishop drops. The problem is that they have a second rook that they can drop. So I need to actually play Mino. Like, if they do drop a piece this far away from my castle, um, maybe I do just run? I'm not sure. Yeah, so if they drop this here, I think I just run the gold away. Oh! Okay. That is risky. Um... Hmm. Didn't expect that. I don't know what to do against this. I have ideas. So if the idea here is that they want their king to be protected by some other pieces. 
I think this is the proper response, is that, okay, your king can have some neighbors, um, but I get to pick who they are. Um, so now if I check from behind, they can block with the silver from behind, but then I can fork this. But also, like, a pinned silver from that direction could be easily attacked in other ways. Oh, I'm also attacking this gold general here. Oh. So, yeah, if I think that my attack is going to fail... I could bail out and take this. I should have spent more time thinking because once they do interpose... Like, they don't have to use a silver either to block. They could use anything to block. They use a pawn. How many pieces could I possibly pile up on a pawn? Well, no, I could keep marching the king forward with the same device, couldn't I? Silver drop, dragon takes, gold drop. Oh, yeah, so... Oh, goodness, this is more serious than I thought. Silver and a gold in hand is a really strong combo. Um, at least when you got this wall of six pawns right here. It's kind of hard to resist. Um, silver drop, king takes, dragon takes, king over, gold drop, king back, knight, king, it's not mate. Checkmate is what matters. We're gonna panic and bail out. We're going to take the gold general. So. Yeah, I couldn't find the mate. Yeah, continuing to look at this point is folly. Unless they get forced back into the same position, which, you know, something like that could happen. Oh, this is interesting. That's more interesting than I would have liked. Um, hmm. That's a poisoned gold general. Oh my god. When does that happen in Shogi? In chess, they talk about poison pieces. Um, yeah, this is something. Well, I guess if they do this fork, I have a knight check that breaks the combo, but that's exciting. Um, this knight check. King over, silver, king. Well, no, silver, king takes gold. Yeah, I think this knight check is strong. Possibly this made it last turn and I just missed it. Well, no, I have a gold now. That's why it matters. That's why some of this might work now and might not have worked last turn. Knight check. King moves somewhere. Silver check. Yeah, there's, like, mate everywhere here. 
Um, Still don't see mate. It's so close. It's not me. It's not me. It's really close. But if this king dances around a lot, I still don't see mate in every line. The one I'm most concerned about is king up, silver drop, bishop takes. Which technically is not mate. So that's to say, I'm not, or king up 5-5, five five, same deal. So I'm not alarmed that I'm failing to find mate, because the backup variation is me taking the bishop and then forking the king and the dragon. Um, but, yeah, I can't find the freaking mate. Um, so, oh, right. This is saving them a piece in that variation. Um... I have quite the active imagination, don't I? Wait, no, this is me. This is the weirdest checkmate ever. So, if they take this, gold drop, king back, gold drop, king over, gold mates in the center of the board. Um, if the king goes this way, gold drop mate. King goes to 5-5. Five, five. Gold drop, bishop takes, silver takes, and I eventually mate somewhere. Yeah, so in the end of this variation, the king blocks the bishop, and the dragon cuts off the file. It's tricky. Very exciting game. Thanks for a game. Oh, that was sharp. Sharp game. I've narrowly avoided deranking. <laughs> All right, so we can review this at their perusal. Um, so this does not have the same rules as our other tournaments, so we just review however we want to review. Um, 
I know I tend to be pretty strict about review and the other stuff, but yeah, here yeah, I still do recommend, as we're doing, looking from the beginning of the game, seeing what we could find. Yeah, I think, yeah. Um, but yeah, my sec, my, oh yeah, well there is this. So, what was the deal with this line? Right, so he can't do that directly. Um... Yeah, uh, Rick takes might have been slightly too early. So, yeah, this, uh, here my pieces are kind of tied up. So, like, um, I guess I'm trying to build a castle. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so this pawn sack might not have been well-intentioned in the first place, or maybe it's a good idea. I'm not sure. Mm. Um... This defends this point. Um... So, but yeah, after that, um, uh, uh, it's not easy. Uh, I do prefer your position here. But I'm really not sure. Um, yeah, I guess we could get the hat back. There's a lot of stuff to look at. Even here, it's not entirely clear what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, uh, thought my rook drop was so much stronger. Um, so yeah, I guess we continue. Um, Yeah, so um, yeah, this was what was I looking at? There was something fun. Um, so yeah. This here, just, um, prior to your rook check and bishop drop, maybe defensible. Uh, 
Yeah, so, but like, these two seem to be what sealed the deal here. Prior to the rook check and bishop drop, uh, there might have been something. It's, it's hard. Um... Um, so, uh, how can we, uh, It's hard. Um, but I like uh, being up a uh, bishop. So, hmm. so like candidate move ideas. Um, I guess there's like this and this. Um, Maybe there's this. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, I think it needs to be over one. Um, because, like, the silver drop I did in the game... Um, yeah. yeah, this... Since I'm not seeing mate in all the lines, I kind of like this position for um, my opponent. It's crazy, but... Um, I think eventually you do survive this and um, with a strong counterattack to boot. So like this is gonna come and promote. It, it's hard. Yeah. I'm not sure. The way it played out in the game was rough. <laughs> yeah. Um hmm. Oh. Oh, you're right. We are playing uh Tourney to Master. It, it should be quite interesting. You're right. So, we played a ladder game uh with Escape Artist who uh won another interesting game with us. Uh we played Here's the All-American uh, tournament with our first round opponent, Viridin, uh, or I Prevails. Um, but yeah, this, uh, it's, we had quite the sharp game here, that's for sure. Um, I had one more piece, I'd be much more confident here. But yeah, I just don't have it here.
Um, let's see, at this All-American Shogi Tournament, um, or the Summer Tournament, I'm uh, one for one so far. We got three rounds to go until the finals, if we make it there for that far. Um, yeah. Let me take a look. Hmm. Wait, so no, this is the first position after um, this, but yeah. Uh, almost uh, sac uh, sacrificed uh, the rook instead of the bishop. Uh, but that looked in your favor. Uh, yeah. I almost did this the other way around, but the king looked like it was escaping. Yeah. This looks uh, super unclear. Mm. Uh, yeah, here there were three moves I considered. Um, so there was like this silver drop. Bishop drop, or just simply taking the knight. Um, it's so, so, so sharp. And I couldn't figure it out, but I had no time left. I just had to play this. Um, after defending the knight, putting pressure on the bishop, who's thinking of trying to take the rook somehow. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Um, so, like, I thought you might put a piece on here to somehow stop it. Um, um, but after putting pressure on the bishop, he's thinking trying to take... The, yeah. Like... Again, uh, dropping a rook against a rook drop. It's just so murky. But, um, yeah, I don't know. If I had more pieces, I could say, like, this is advantageous for me, but, like, I'm not sure I have enough to mate. My own king is in kind of a bind. Um... Yeah. So. Yeah, by the time we get into here. So I've been considering, like, um, well, earlier he had this, but anyway. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where we're going to look. Oh. Um, oh, yeah, we could, I think... Next couple of hours is best. That way, I'm not worrying all week and next weekend about what to play. Um, hmm. uh, this uh, whole game was sharp, but. Having it, it's hard to read. Yeah, this is close game. At least that's the sense I get. Um, but yeah, I think although my attack did prevail, I'm not sure against every opponent it would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, to Grolik, to your question, um, I think today's actually quite good, I think. Because otherwise we're going to have to figure out, like, sometime next weekend to get it played. Because, like, during the work week is actually really hard for me. 
Um, But yeah, this this game was um, yeah. There were maybe some ways to try to encase the rook and make this even more unclear. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. <laughs> Bye. Uh, there's a typo there, but that's okay. Yeah, my opponent had the same typo, and I didn't have the heart to... Or, I'm sorry, my previous opponent, Ternita Master, made the same typo when submitting the result. It was pretty funny. Um, yeah, so certainly there's a moment of hindsight where you realize, oh crap, what have I gotten myself into here? Uh, yeah, I, this, I think, is the best response. And I think this is a very reasonable response here. And like I was saying, we didn't look at this on the board, but like Rook Drop here might have been something I missed. Uh, during the game I mentioned how this could be confusing. Um, and how I was thinking about, well, if we do all this, I could do that, I don't know, but also maybe there's other stuff I can do. Um... Yeah, I had started to look at, like, what if I just straight up take this for just a knight and then drop the knight? And, like, what's the best deal we can get here? I don't know, because, like, the silver can't go back. And coincidentally, there isn't a really great way to defend this. I mean, I guess there's that. But now, with the gold having moved over, then there's this, and the king would move back to defend the gold, and we go and promote this way, and it's still a mess. Oh, but also, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that would have worked, honestly, this sack. So that would have left me with something like this instead, and it's not clear either. Um... But more likely something like this, I guess, and the king escapes, and my king's under fire. So that's one way this could have continued. Um, yeah, I'm, in retrospect, I'm glad I took this way and not that way. Um, I mean, yes, this does attack both lances, but this would basically force them to play the move I was afraid of. Well, they can't do it just yet. They have to, like, spend one move running. But I can't bottle the king. Not without a rook. And it's hard for me to... Well, hang on. That's interesting. I could actually stop the rook from promoting. So maybe there is some merit to this. But, yeah, we played it this way instead. Where if they defend very accurately, I thought they were better. But it looks near impossible to defend. But... I don't know, I think between this and this coming back to defend, it looks just as hard to attack as it does to defend. I don't know what to play here. Uh, oh! Let's see if we want to play in an hour and ten. Any time a bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, that sounds fine. Yeah, I don't know, like, with my Twitch delay or whatever, how this... I just want to make sure I'm communicating that in writing, just so it's unambiguous. So yeah, even after this gold moves up, I was thinking about stuff like this, and how if they could force the silver to move away, um, they'd be better somehow. But like, actually this... During the game, I was having difficulty evaluating this, but yeah, Mino is actually a really strong shape. So, contrast that with this, where I can't build Mino in one turn. So I have to, like, spend a move doing this. And even then, this might not be safe. 
because of something like, I don't know, this. But directly attacking here and defending also looks interesting. Yeah, good luck and skill to both of us. It'll be good fun. So yeah, this is sharp. Um, so there comes that realization where the rook takes and we've gone a bit too far down the rabbit hole. Uh, during the game, I've been thinking about this. Um, I don't think it's that great. <laughs> but it's possible, but... Now we've committed to taking the slants, and, like, what do we do about all this? I don't know. Um, actually, maybe that's... Maybe the silver advance is not right. Maybe the gold advance is required here to stop that. Um, but even so, when I was thinking about this, it's countered by a pawn drop, preventing the bishop's escape. So the rook is pretty strong where it's at. So that's a long way to get to saying that, yeah, this, bish this silver advance or silver retreat, either one would have been pretty reasonable here. This bears some additional threats, like I was trying to point out during the game. That if I got too cheeky about this, um, this doesn't quite work. So they can launch this counter attack. And um, did I misread this? It's very possible I misread this. I thought they had a knight in hand where I'd have something to be seriously worried about. No, I saw this. This is what I was worried about. So to prevent them from just outright winning the silver back, I could do this, but then this goes back to defend here. And I stopped reading here, but um, turns out uh, something might be possible here. I'm not sure. No, this rook's got everything covered. If I try to get too clever, this is still pinned, and if I try to continue pursuit, um, yeah, I'm not sure that works. If I try this directly, okay, yeah, I get much less than I'm bargaining for here. So that's to say the best that this gets after all this cheekiness is they get a promoted piece. And then I have to be really concerned about what's happening next here. So, yeah, instead when they take here, I had to do the not-so-cheeky response. Um, and for a while we were looking at stuff like this too. Um, not that necessarily, but stuff like it. Um... But then I get to take a knight. But even this might be unclear. It was a sharp game. But yeah, in the end, uh, we did prevail with this exciting checkmate. Where um, just coincidentally, I block off all this key squares. I don't think I missed any might prior to that. Here... This was a tense moment, but I don't think this does it. I think um, they just barely escape here. I mean, I could threaten mate. So now I'm threatening to place a piece to checkmate. Um, but that's not the same thing as giving mate. Uh, it, I mean, this is pretty strong, so it's still fine. Their attack is just a bit too slow there. Yeah, so this silver drop doesn't quite cut it. This one might. This is a lot closer, because if I do the same drop here, I don't see a follow-up. Or I don't see continuation here. Um, perhaps I should. <laughs> perhaps I should see a continuation here, eh? Uh, yeah, I should see that. Alright, so... 
against this silver drop. Yeah, that's painful. It's good to see that I find this in the postmortem. But, um... Okay, so we found it. So that means, like, you'd have to use a bishop instead of a silver. Um... But in this case, the bishop is not a good defensive piece. Um, but yeah, if we were to try the same exact attack here, the bishop, I don't think, would do it. Um, so we'd still need other pieces to participate in an attack for it to prevail. And we'd still eventually get Hishi, but it's not Suma. Um, so yeah, that's a bit far from the king. Um, that's kind of amazing, though. How did I... That's such a strong threat. But yeah, stuff like this... Actually, yeah, a pawn here. <laughs> what am I thinking? Yeah, a pawn might have been a safer bet. Uh, I might have dropped something in front to try to prepare threats on both sides. I'm threatening these kinds of drops. Um, and if they get cheeky, like say they try to defend here, um, we check on the one side and mate on the other. So, wait, is that not mate? It doesn't look like mate. Um... So, yeah, like I was saying, we check on the one side. No, that doesn't work either. Yeah, so it's not so easy. <laughs> um, there's got to be something. Yeah, so we check here first. Um, so they have to run away, but um, they don't get to run away. Yeah, so that's me. So, yeah, this drop on the head is menacing. Wait, so I was saying all this about, like, I thought this could defend because I didn't see a mate. And maybe I'm right. It looks hard. <laughs> looks super hard. Um, but yeah, if I check the king around, it, this problem, which is already hard, gets harder. So you have to do something like this. Um, not sure what you do next. Is this really worth three generals? Maybe. It's a strong defensive piece. So another possibility is, like, if somehow this I don't have a mate, then I get to run away. Yeah, I get to defend like this. It's hard for me to read this, but yeah. Interesting start to the All-American Shogi Tournament. Good luck to all the participants. Um, hopefully we all have very fun summer games, so... Uh, yeah, thanks uh, for everybody for participating in this. Thanks to Virden for scheduling our game today. That was good fun.